Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to use Scratch 2.0 to create a Pong game for two players. Now, first we're going to sign in with our username and our password. Alright, once we're in, we click Create. So we're going to start a new game. We're using Google Chrome here. Uh, right, so now the first thing we have to do is we want to get rid of this cat because we don't need the cat. Right, so we're going to delete the cat and uh, well at the top we're going to give this a, a name so we're going to call it two player pong game and then just put PCM. Right, now at the bottom we're going to use a ball. So we're going to choose a ball from the library. So we're going to use this ball. You could, you can use another object, but uh, just for this, we're going to use this ball. So this is going to be our ball object. Now, if we click on it, if we go to costumes, we can change the color of the ball. So let's say if you want a green ball, just uh, use the green ball like that. Now, next thing is we're going to make the ball move because if we run the game, nothing happens because we haven't put any code into this ball. So we're going to do that right now. So what we want to do, we want to say when we click the green flag, we would like the uh, ball to go in a random direction of any angle. So we're going to use point in direction and we're going to use a random number. So right now it says 90 uh, degrees, but we're going to pick from 1 to 360 degrees. Okay. And also, we want the ball to be moving, right? We want the ball to be moving continuously. So we go to Control, Forever, and we want to move 10 steps, right? That's for the speed. Okay, now. If uh, I want the ball to also bounce on the edge, I don't want the ball to just fly off the game. So what I have to do is I have to say, if the ball is on the edge, then bounce the ball. Now, if I run the game, we now have a bouncing ball, just like that. So that is for the bouncing ball. I can stop the game. Now, we might also want the ball to, uh, to keep appearing in the center. So let's say if we always want the ball to appear here, Okay, right now, it will only start where it left off. We want it to begin, say, uh, in the middle here. So let's say uh, if we go there. Okay, here you'll have the coordinates for the mouse, right? Over here, it will tell you what the X coordinate and the Y coordinate are for this ball. So let's say uh, we put it there. No, let's put it there. Minus four and six. So every time, let's say if the ball is there, if we press this, it's always going to go to coordinates negative four and six. Every single time it's going to keep going there, you see? Just like that. Now for the next part, we want to create um, two players, right? We need two paddles. So to make a paddle, we're going to paint a sprite and we're going to use a rectangle. So for the first player, we're going to use a blue rectangle. So pick the, uh, so choose a blue rectangle. Well, we should, we should fill in the color like that. All right, and at the top, we're going to, uh, no, actually, um, that's fine. All right, it's quite big, isn't it? So we'll have, we're going to use the shrink tool. We're going to make this a little bit smaller. So there we go. You can also make the ball smaller as well. That's fine. Now, that is going to be player one. So we're going to right click, or actually no, we just click on that, that letter I, and we're gonna call this player one, just like that. Let's click back, now that's player one. Now let's have a uh, player two. So if we want to play a player two, let's duplicate. That means make a copy. We take player two, it's already called player two, and we're gonna change the color. So let's say we're gonna make uh, player to uh, this purple color. Okay, brilliant. So that is our player two. So just put them in the right positions. I think they could be a little bit smaller. Maybe um, 
Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we'll keep it like that. Now the next part is movement, because right now there's no way to move these paddles, these players. So what we want to do now is we want to make it so that we can move these paddles. Let's say we want player one to be moved by the keyboard, the arrows, and player two we're going to use the mouse. So let's uh, do that now. So we're going to go on to uh, player one. Okay, now for player one, we have to double click. Notice, right, there's no code inside the player one paddle. There's some code in the ball, but we want to put some code in the paddle for player one. So we're going to say, uh, when I press the left arrow, I want the paddle to move left. Now to do that at a certain speed, we'll say minus 20. I'm going to right click and duplicate, make a copy of this for the right arrow. And then we'll just make that 20 steps. Now we can test it, just run the game. So if I use my arrows, I can actually move the paddle. Notice the ball is going straight through the paddle because we have to program what happens when the ball hits the paddle. So that part's not done yet. Okay, so we need to do player two. Now for player two, we're going to give the uh, player two a mouse control. Okay, so we're going to say, uh, right now we're on the player two paddle, so we're going to say when we start the game, we want continuously, forever, we want to set this uh, paddle to follow the x-coordinate of the mouse. So set the x-coordinate of this paddle of the uh, x-coordinate of the mouse, right? So now if we run the game, you notice I'm moving my mouse. Yep, see, just like that. And I can also use the keyboard to move player two. It's not the best control, but uh, it's better than nothing. So there we go. Now, we've done the control. Now, the next thing to do is we want to program what happens when the ball hits this paddle. So let's start with uh, one of the players. Let's start with, uh, let's say, uh, player one. We're going to say what happens when the ball hits player one. So let's put some code into the into the ball. So let's put that aside. So we're going to say, right, when we start the game, we're going to have a forever if. All right, notice the hexagon shape. So we're going to say if the ball, if this ball is touching this player, we want the ball to bounce off the, the player one. So we use the hexagon. If the ball is touching player one, then we want the ball, first it needs to point in the opposite direction. So the way we do that, okay, we have to use a mathematical operator. We have to say point in direction. We say direction minus, oh, excuse me, direction minus 180 degrees. And it will, that means it will go in the opposite direction. So that means go in the opposite direction. And we also uh, want a sound as well. So this is a popping sound. So we know that the ball has hit the paddle because it makes a pop sound. And uh, we use the sound script. And we're gonna say play pop sound until done. Because we don't want the pop to keep continually playing. We don't want it to be pop, 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 pop. So we just want it to pop one time. Okay, now let's give it a test. All right, All right, there's a pop sound, there's another pop sound. Great, okay, so that works. So that's, uh, that's great, it's working. Now, of course, we have to do it for player two as well. So go back to the ball. Now, what we could do, instead of just adding all the blocks again, we can just right click and duplicate. We're gonna make another one for player uh, two. Let's put this at the bottom. So we're gonna say, if the ball touches player two, we, uh, want the ball to point in uh, to yeah point in the opposite direction and also play the pop sound and you can choose whatever sound you like but I'm just using this for the example so look uh, let's have a look so we've got the pop sound pop sound pop sound pop sound yep and it, it bounces quite well okay so let's just put these back great now um, for the rules of the game 
How are we going to keep score? I think that's going to be quite important. Now, to keep score, what we have to do, uh, we need to create a, a variable. Like a variable is uh, something that we use to store uh, numbers. So we're going to go to data and we're going to make a variable. And we're going to call it player one score. And we're going to have another one for player two. So player one score, player two score. And you can see the scores are right here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, let's say, uh, we'll put player one score there. If I double click on it, right, uh, it doesn't actually say that player one score and player two, but there you go. Okay, so we do that. We'll put that there. Now, uh, next thing we want to do is we're going to program it. But what we want to say, how is the game going to keep score? So we're going to put in some color on the background. So we're going to say, if the ball touches here, we're going to put a color here. So you'll see in a moment. Now, this is the background, the backdrop for the game. I click on it, I go to backdrops and I get this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, yellow stripe at the top. So get my uh, rectangle, we're going to have a filled rectangle. Let's use this yellow. We're going to put a yellow stripe at the top. And uh, similarly, we're going to have, um, let's see, what color could we have? We'll have a green stripe at the bottom, like that. Now, don't worry if the rectangle is slightly taller than the other. It really doesn't matter. We also want to divide uh, a bit like a you know tennis court. You have two halves. So we're going to put a line between the two sides. Yeah, uh, don't worry too much. If you make a mistake, if you do, just undo it and just try again. It doesn't have to be completely exact. Just, yeah, just whatever you think is uh, appropriate. So, all right, that will do. All right, so there you go. And you can see we now have um, a better backdrop. And you can we can just align the scores um, accordingly like that. Okay, now let's go back to the ball. Let's go back to the script. Now, how are we going to program this? So what we need to do is this if you just bear with me for a moment okay so first go to events now let's uh start with uh, player one let's have a look so first for player one we're going to set the score to zero so every time we restart the game the game does not keep the uh, old score we want the score always to reset to zero when we start. Now, we're going to go to uh, forever. It's going to keep checking if. So we're going to say if the uh, ball is touching the yellow color, then we add one point to the player one score. That's what we want. So let's uh, build that. So we want the uh, operator. Oh, sorry, no, no, we want the sensing, right? So, ah, color, let me see. If you want to get this exact color, all you have to do is just click here and then click there and it, it will pick out that exact color. So we say, if the ball is touching this particular color, then we're going to uh, add to the score. So we're going to change player one score by one point. So every time it goes one point. Now I want to show you something here. Let me show you something. All right. You might notice, yeah, notice when the ball hits the yellow, it doesn't go up by one. It actually goes up by five. So what we want to do is we want to add a weight. We want to add a weight so it doesn't just keep adding so quickly because it's it remains there for so long. And it's like one, two, three, four, five, and then it goes off. Let's add a weight to it. So if we go to event. No, sorry, it's control. Let's say, okay, we change it by one and let's wait one second. Now you'll see what happens. See now just one, two, right? That's much better. Okay, so let's go back to the ball. So that's what we have. Uh, so similar thing for player two, we're just gonna duplicate that. And this is going to be for player two. So 
uh, player two score. And it's pretty much the same as player one, except that you want this to be touching the green color. And don't forget, change all the player ones to player two now. So this is what you get. So let's see, one, one, see, there you go. Now, very similar to the Pong game that you uh, saw on YouTube, or you may have played it before, we want the game to finish when somebody scores to 11. So the game, there has to be a way for the game to end, because right now the game will just go on forever. What we want to do is we want the game to end again when the score goes to 11. So let's uh, program that. So we go to events. Okay, so we're going to have another forever if. So forever. So we're going to say if the player one score is equal to 11, then we're going to say player one wins, and then we're going to stop the whole game. So that's what we'll do. So let's get the operator. So we'll say uh, if, go to data, player one score. So the score is stored in this uh, oval shape. If the score is equal to 11, then we want to say player one wins for two seconds. So player one wins, exclamation mark in big capital letters, for two seconds. And if you want to stop the whole game, you use stop all. It will stop the whole game. It's basically the same as pushing this button. It will stop everything. Of course, similarly, we want this also for player two. So we've got to change uh, player one score to player two score. And uh, change all the player ones to player two. All right, just make sure it's all good, it's all working. Uh, the only way to check if it's all working is to play the game. All right, so you got one, two, yep, and so forth. And it's never going to be perfect, so. I'm sure some of the students will find a better way for the for the ball to move. This is not the most perfect way of doing it. There's a much better way of doing it, I'm sure. And you can also hack the game as well. Let's say if you um yeah, you can double click on the score and you can say increase it slightly, okay, and then it will just um, that's supposed to be eleven, but it's still on ten. I don't know why, but but there you go, you see, well, the idea is once it gets to 11, the game will stop. Now, uh, over here, you see you've got move 10 steps. If you increase that to 50, uh, the ball will actually go a lot faster. Okay, right now I'm just playing eight, nine, just waiting for it to get to 11. 11. Yeah, I know it goes up to 12, but that's okay. That's okay. All right, so there you go. That is the Pong game. So that's all the code for the players, for the rules, for the movement. And there we go. So now if I want to share the game, I just uh, hit the share button here. And the game is shared. There is the link to my game. And I can send this to my ICT teacher or I could uh, share it with my other friends. So. There you go. That is a two-player Pong game. Please uh, see if you can make it. See if you can make it even better as well. So I give you that challenge and uh, good luck, all the best, and be creative. So thank you so much and see you all soon. Goodbye.